Okay, we are live. So, hello everyone. Uh, this is Shams Farooq from Korean University Application Center. So, today we are going to have a virtual seminar regarding study in Korea and its opportunities and about Usong University. So, please meet our guest, Ms. Rezia Usman. Uh, she is Senior Regional Manager of Usong University. She'll be talking about the opportunities in South Korea for higher studies at Usong University. Please proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. Shams, for the opportunity. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rezia Usman, and I represent Usong University, and I'm physically located in South Korea. So today we're going to talk about unique opportunities for you to come study and pursue your career in South Korea. And feel free to let me know, or you can let Mr. Shams and his team know if you have any questions at all. So we'll begin our discussion today and feel free to um, chat or stop me midway or wait until the, the presentation ends if you have anything in mind to ask. Now I'm going to share my screen. Hold on a second. Okay, so again, I would like to reiterate that I represent Usong University. Now, Usong University is located in a city called Daejeon in South Korea. Now, the reason why we're having this um, event today is to let you know that South Korea is very much open to a lot of foreigners to pursue their study and career here. Now, as you can see in my screen, the, this picture that you're looking at is a bunch of our students. So they are not models. They are not people that we hire. These are students. And as you can see, they come from different backgrounds. They come from different countries. And similarly, I also come from a different country. I'm not Korean. And this is my fifth year living in South Korea. That should tell you a lot about how the country is very much open to a lot of foreigners. Now, to get to know South Korea itself, a lot of people know South Korea as from as a destination for tourism, for example. And uh, it, it is no doubt that maybe you know South Korea from Squid Game, if you watch Netflix, right? Or additionally, um, some of the Korean food is very famous. A lot of you probably know South Korea from K-pop or from K-drama or a lot of movies like Parasites. But there's one aspect about South Korea that a lot of foreigners need to know, and which I'm going to discuss a little bit. It is no doubt that South Korea is very famous for technology and innovation. So it is so famous that the magazine Forbes dubbed South Korea as number one country in the world as far as technology and innovation. So that means South Korea is on the top, way above Singapore, way above Germany, Switzerland, United States. And everything that you see on my screen as I speak is coming from South Korea. A lot of you are probably familiar with Samsung or Hyundai or LG or Kia. These are the common brands that is disseminated all over the world. However, there's one thing about Korea that a lot of people don't know. So a lot of things that you see on the screen today, for example, coloring back tone, retina display, 3D hologram and 4D cinema and 5G internet. These are all innovations by South Korea. But if you're asking, great, if this is our innovations from South Korea, how come I see it in other country too? How come I see it in other companies too? And it's not South Korean companies and it's not South Korea as a country. That is a very good question. And let me tell you one information about South Korea. Now, South Korea is very different from Bangladesh. Bangladesh is a land of um, natural resources. There's so many uh, people, there's a big population. So the assets is really big. In Bangladesh, if you throw in seeds anywhere, it will grow beautifully as a tree. Now, that's a powerful, powerful thing about Bangladesh. The thing in South Korea is the land is very arid. The country is not perfect for agriculture at all, right? It's a small country surrounded by sea and in the middle it's kimchi. And at the same time, um, a lot of trees cannot grow there. 
But you can see here the industry is growing very fast. And South Korea has one problem. And a lot of people don't know that South Korea has a demography problem, has a population crisis. There's not a lot of people who want to make babies. So what does that mean for South Korea? That means for the country itself with a growing economy and with so many different opportunities in the country, there's not a lot of people they have within the country to work there. So they need people to come in, understand the language, understand the culture, and then this will be the main feeder of professionals working in a white color industry in South Korea. And this is where the opportunities for all of you are coming in. Now, why should we come to South Korea? There's multiple different reasons why South Korea is very much a place for people to study and to work. First of all is culture. It is no doubt that Korea's culture is very much um, exposed on the media. So there is no secret there with the K-pop, K-drama and K-beauty, which is a trend in the world. A lot of you already know what, uh, what the uh, pop culture in Korea is. And because it's, a located in, it's located in Asia, there's a lot of different values, living values and how they respect the elderly, day-to-day -day values. It's not so far different from any other Asian countries. I'm from Southeast Asia and similarly in South Asia too, there are so many different things that overlaps with South Korean cultures. And additionally, in South Korea, if you study here and have the opportunity to work as well, you will become a person with strong work and study ethics. That sets you apart from a lot of your peers, or a lot of your friends who are not studying in South Korea. And additionally, in South Korea, the quality of life is so high. So to those of you who don't know, uh, Korea is extremely safe. Now I'm a woman, a lot of time uh, I'm trained to go to certain places that is not putting myself in a vulnerable situation, right? But in South Korea, I don't have to worry about that. Everywhere I go, I don't have to worry about being robbed, being stabbed or um, you know, being harmed or hurt. And additionally, if I go to places, let's say in on campus, I leave my bag in one place and then I forgot about it. The next day, either the bag is still there or you can go to Los and found and ask, oh, I left my bag here. Maybe you can recover it for me. Maybe you're keeping it. And 99% of the chance it's still there. Mr. Shams here has been to Korea so many times. He can testify himself how safe Korea is, like right, Mr. Shams? Yeah, it's really excellent that I, um, I had a really excellent time visiting. It's a very safe country. The people are very friendly uh, and they're well behaved. They are welcoming. So, Absolutely. That's 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 uh, exactly what we're aiming for. And additionally, too, we have a very affordable and advanced healthcare facilities here. And the healthcare facilities, it's so high standard that you now we have a new system that all foreign residents, including students, professors, you are all covered by the national health insurance, something that you need to pay every month. But that means as soon as you're walking into a hospital or to a doctor, to a clinic, and you will get a treatment, you only need to pay 20 or 30% of the bill. The rest is covered by the government because you're a paying insurer of the government and um, national health insurance because they believe in the universal health care. Additionally, there's a lot of um, great deal of leisure activities to do and great places to visit. Um, Mr. Shams probably shared earlier too that Korea has a um, very welcoming environment and it's so easy to get around from one city to another because public transportation is on time, reliable, affordable. If you, you don't need to buy a car or a motorcycle here. Uh, some, you want to have a bike, that's completely fine. But as far as I live here, a lot of people who are students, they don't need a car and they can still go by because the buses here are very cheap. They're on time and they go to so many different places. And on the weekend, you can travel to different cities. And because Korea is fairly small and the transportation, our fast train is really ridiculously fast. You can travel anywhere you want 
with your friends and come back on the same day if you want. If you ask Mr. Shams, for example, he goes from Busan, from Seoul, from Daejeon to many different cities in fast train, and he can cover all his trips in just one or two days and relax for the last, the rest of the trip, right, Mr. Shams? Yeah, excellent. Uh, really, actually, I had journey in uh, KTX and I have traveled too many cities in one day. I had a couple of meetings in one day, which is really right. uh, not possible in our country. That's great. Mr. Shams himself is a, a, you know, a life testimonial from how great South Korea is for a living quality. And public transportation is a big thing around here and is heavily reliant by a lot of people and for you too as well when you're studying here. And also South Korea is a very high tech um, uh, country. A lot of things are done electronically here. I never have to carry cash at all. Uh, for the past five years. I forgot how to uh, bring cash with me because if you pay for a taxi, it's the same card for, um, you know, sorry. So, so the card I have is the same one for taxi, for grocery shopping, for taking the bus, for uh, withdrawing money from the ATM, from taking the subway, going by the train. So it's one card. And if you go to, if you live in an apartment, for example, the apartment would have an electronic lock. So you don't have to carry a key. If you decide to buy a car, it has a button to turn it on. You don't need a key. So if you live in South Korea, you will forget that in the, you know, in the past, you have to carry keys around. So that's how electronized the country is. And lastly, but not the least, South Korea has a very high education standard. Do you know that? 70% of the population in South Korea has university education. That is the highest in the world. And that says a lot about the education standard here. When you're coming here, that means you are going to experience and be exposed to that kind of standard too. Now, I'm gonna talk about Wusong University and how we can help you achieving your dream and achieving a better future with education and career as well. Now, why Wuzong University is such an attraction, particularly to international students, is because first we have one of the best international environment in South Korea. The first thing pop into your mind about South Korea is probably, oh, I have to study Korean uh, for my classes. Oh, my professors or my friends are going to be mostly Koreans. And those are not true. What happened in, uh, at Wusong universities are not only the classes are mostly in English, if not 100%, your friends are coming from all over the world. We represent 60 plus different nationalities. And our business program, for example, make up 70% of international students. Actually, for the business program, they're only allowed to have 30% of Korean students. The rest has to be international students, including from Bangladesh. Now. Additionally, because we're located in a city called Daejeon, that is actually the Silicon Valley of Korea, and the city is, is actually a student city. Not only we have multiple uh, research centers, we also have 19 universities in one city. That means everywhere you go, you're going to meet fellow students. So that's one. Second, living expenses is far, far lower compared to the big cities in South Korea. If you live in Seoul or uh, other big city uh, such as Busan, you've probably seen Train to Busan on Netflix and something, and you you know what how famous it is Seoul. Those are like the very expensive cities in South Korea. Whereas in Daejeon, the living expenses is 40% lower, very significant, 40%. And it's important for you as a student to save up as much money as possible because, you know, you can use it for other purposes, for saving it in the future when you start working, right? But even though we're not located in Seoul, it's only like what, Mr. Shams, 45 minutes, 50 minutes away from Seoul, am I correct? Right, right. Uh very, very Mr. Shamsi, right? Uh, 145 right. kilometers. Uh, you can right. reach in 15 minutes. Great, great. Mr. Shams here is a globe trotter. Once he's in Korea, he will go all over the country in just one day and then come back to his hotel, sitting and finishing the rest of the work. That's because transportation is very manageable in South Korea. Now, 
we have a couple of different majors or programs taught 100% in English, 100% in English. So you will see business administration, culinary arts, hospitality management, restaurant and entrepreneurship, media and communication arts, artificial intelligence and big data, technology management, and human and digital interface. All of this, again, 100% in English. Probably all of you ask, at what point you are required to speak Korean in your class, right? So the, the answer is none. You are only required to take Korean language classes embedded in the curriculum. But as far as how much Korean you need to speak outside of the class, outside of the Korean language classroom, it's entirely up to you. Of course, living in South Korea, it's going to be very helpful if you can learn Korean in your day to day life. The reason is two. One, it's easier for you to integrate into the society. Second, it will make your opportunities even higher after graduation for employment opportunities. If you speak Korean and then uh, your national language and then additionally to um, English, you're not looking for jobs, jobs are looking for you. So hopefully in the future, when you come here, you don't need to speak Korean for admission, but you learn Korean throughout the way. Now, um, what makes Wusong University unique? Why do we have so many international students, right? The first reason is support. What I mean by support could be many things. First, if you're studying business, we have a team that is called Career Development Centers. These are a team that is 100% dedicated to give you information about internship and employment opportunities. Additionally, if you would like to apply to certain jobs after you graduate, you can come up to them and ask, is my CV looking okay? Is my interview technique is okay? And a lot of times they have workshops on how to do um, interviews and how to um, you know, write CVs, both in English and in Koreans. And we also have in-house counselors for psychological support. Why do we need a psychological support? All of us are international people living in abroad, away from family. Maybe if you have already you know, a husband or a wife, or probably you're gonna miss your parents or girlfriend or boyfriend. Yeah, you're coming here with a different background, different culture, it could be a cultural shock. And that is why we have psychological support for you. We have a writing center on campus for all your assignments uh, and, and support for English, if you need any. And most importantly, Mr. Shams can testify because he has visited our university for so many times. We have international staff that is ready to help students. And as you can see, I'm a person here talking about South Korea, but I myself am an international person. I'm not South Korean. That means people who are working in the team from a person who is teaching in a class, from someone who's talking to students, all of us are mostly international people. We understand what you're going through. Now, another reason why uh, our university is an attraction for students is hands-on professors. So multiple times the students, when they're dealing with uh, challenges in your classroom, you can make an appointment with a professor or you can walk in into their office and say, professor, I'm struggling in your class. There are certain chapters I didn't understand. Do you mind giving a few strategies for me to get better in class? And they're most certainly say, yes, of course. Uh, here's how to help you with that. Here's how to deal with it. Here's our couple strategies. So our professors are mostly very much helpful and approachable. Why our professors are like that is because 70% of the professors are also non-Koreans. They know for sure it's not easy for international students to live apart from their family. This is the first time you're away, so they'll be very helpful for any academic needs you have. And last reason, last but not least, is how international our cohort is. So the people that you see in this picture, none of them, uh, no, one of them is Korean, the rest is international students. So 70% of our students are international, 80% of the professors are international. So it's a conducive environment for all of you to come here and study. Now, outside of Seoul, our university is number one when it comes to international student population. I know multiple times I said international, so many diverse students. I repeated myself multiple times to emphasize how important it is to have an environment that understand your needs as a person who is not Korean. Now, 
I know a lot of you are probably coming from study for studying only, but I highly suggest that you also take some time to pursue your passion. So if you like dancing, if you like coding, if you like drawing, if you like reading, you like debate, our university is one of the strongest when it comes to non-academic activities. And we would like to see more students to be more active outside of the class. Why? Because it's very much helpful for you to uh, pursue your passion and channel your passions. So you can join clubs or student councils or any other activities that is available um, at our university. Additionally, opportunities is not scarce. We have generous opportunities for students. First of all, scholarship is up to 100% depending of course on your academic performance. If you're applying for a bachelor degree, that would depend on your high school performance. If you're applying for a master's or PhD, that would depend on your bachelor and master's performance. And after graduation, you can apply for a D10 visa. D10 visa is a visa that justify your stay in South Korea while you're looking for employment opportunities. You don't see that in a lot of other countries, right? I myself was, uh, I studied in in the US. And after I graduated, I realized that a lot of opportunities is very much focused on a lot of Americans. So they kick me out of the country. But in South Korea, they give you visa to stay. Can you imagine that? Yeah, you can apply for that visa, stay and look for opportunities. D10 visa is valid for six months and it's renewable up to two years. Once you get an employment opportunity, then you will change your visa and the company will sponsor you. As a student, you are allowed to work up to 20 hours per week, and the minimum wage is roughly about eight US dollars per um, hour. Now, as far as on-campus facilities, it goes without saying, you can consult Mr. Shams, he's seen it himself. We got library, we got gym, we got swimming pool, we got cafeteria, dormitory. And what you're looking at here is our student in the kitchen. Why in the kitchen? Because our culinary arts program is the best in the country. And we are the only few universities in the world that is offering culinary arts program as a bachelor degree. A lot of other universities, they offer it as a diploma program. In our university, we call it, uh, we, we award bachelor degree. And for kitchens, we have 13 floors just for kitchen, just for culinary arts, in addition to another building of um, international cuisine. So we're pretty much um, one of the famous ones when it comes to culinary arts. Another reason why um, our university is also famous is the global exposure. Um, so as a student, if you're studying uh, in the international program, you can apply for exchange programs, which means you're studying one semester in any countries that you want on a partner university list. So you can go to USA you know, um, and then Europe or other parts of Asia and spend one semester here and come back, make friends there and so on and so forth. If you don't like exchange program, we also have dual degree. Dual degree programs is basically you spent some time studying in Korea and then you spend some time studying in other countries like let's say Taiwan or France, UK, US. And then after that, uh, when you graduate, you receive two degrees. Now that's a dual degree program. So our dual degree opportunities for business program, for example, we have a partnership with USA, with France, with Canada, China, Norway, Taiwan, UK, Australia, and Indonesia. Take your pick. But if you want to stay in South Korea throughout the entire time, that's fine as well. There is no pressure to go abroad if you don't want to. This is something for you if you're interested in exposing yourself to more than just Korea. So we're looking at tuition fee here. So this is the tuition fee for bachelor degree. Just to let you know that the tuition fee is noted in annual for one year. But as a student later on, you only pay for one semester per semester. So I'm putting this annually so it's for, for you to refer to for an easier reference. You can take a picture of this and consult Mr. Shams and his team. And remember what you see here is not yet included your scholarship. 
every student who is applying to our university will be automatically considered for a scholarship. And it starts from 30% provided that you meet the minimum uh, requirements. This is for undergraduate and for master's program, this is what we're looking at. If you're aiming for master's degree, you'll feel free to take a picture of this and you are free to consult Mr. Shams and team one more time. And then this is for PhD. Now I can go back to this if you want and Mr. Shams and his team already have this file as well. You are free to consult and talk to them and have a discussion on which program that you want. As far as living and studying with Usong University, uh, bachelor students are required to stay in the dorm for the first semester. And the dorm costs about roughly 1,100 per semester, including one meal per day. After the first semester, you are free to live as well if you want some apartments that you rent with your friends. And masters and PhD students don't have the obligation to stay at the dorm. You are free to choose um, off-campus apartments or off-campus housing if you want. And usually off-campus apartment cost starts at um, 300 per month, but you can secure something lower than that, but usually it's roughly about 300 per month, depending on size and location. As far as monthly expenses, excluding accommodation is similarly is about 300 per month, depending on lifestyle. So, but if you go and, you know, go out eating a lot with your friends, you go to Pusan a lot, you shop a lot, then you won't spend 300, you will spend more. But if you know how to live frugally, 300 uh, per month is enough. We also provide quarantine facility uh, on campus. Usually right now, South Korea is allowing people to come in, but they have to quarantine first for 14 days, regardless your vaccination arrangement. So, um, and our dorm is open for people to quarantine for two weeks or 14 days at 450 US dollars, including three meals per day, two times of coronavirus test and board. We have two intakes per year, spring and fall intake. So the next intake we have is spring, but if you're coming here in this session, considering to join us in fall, which is in about September, this is the right time to start talking with Mr. Shams and team. And the admission requirement is pretty straightforward. There is no Korean language requirement, but we do require either IELTS, TOEFL, IBT, or Duolingo. IELTS is minimum six. <clears throat> excuse me, TOEFL IVT is 60 and Duolingo 95. And then high school transcript from year 10 plus high school diploma and then essay recommendation letter. If you have non-academic achievements, you can also insert that. And then proof of finance for sure, um, depending on your program. And again, no Korean language proficiency needed for admission. And this is for a graduate program. Same, it's same with the bachelor program. The only difference is that you have to add your CV there and potentially that we're going to have an additional test called GMAT, GRE, or SGAT, but that has to depend on your performance. If your performance is deep good, you don't need to do this test. And then afterwards, you will need two recommendation letters instead of one if you're applying for a master's and PhD. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have an application fee of $50 for any applications. So make sure you don't wanna waste your time in thinking, well, um, oh, this is uh, a low mark, should I submit it or not? Always consult Mr. Shams for his advice. Our admission procedure is really straightforward. So after you submit uh, the online application, you will go through an online interview. You don't have to come to South Korea for that. And then if you get accepted, you will get a certificate of admission and then um, it will tell you how much scholarship you're having, and then you need to pay for the first semester. Then we'll send you visa documents to apply for a visa. So that's all coming from me. Thank you so much. I'll be open to question and answer session or any questions or comments that you'd like to make. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you so much for your detailed information. Actually, I hope this information will be very useful for the students who are planning to study in South Korea and also university. Uh, actually, I have received a few questions from the students uh, about career transfer opportunities. You have already talked about dual degree and 
uh, exchange program. So what about other opportunities for credit transfer? I mean, those who complete their, I mean, education for one year or two years. So uh, is there any other opportunities for transferring their credit to uh, other universities in other countries? So our dual degree programs is the closest one for transfer programs, uh, Mr. Shams. So to those of you who are wondering what's a dual degree program is actually, it works similarly with credit transfer. So what happened is if it's dual degree on a bachelor level, we call it usually two plus two or three plus one. So what happened is after, two, if it's two plus two, after two years studying in South Korea, you can transfer all these two credits into our partner university and then after that you will receive two degrees one from our university and one is from the partner university of course you have to go through internal selection for this but i know bangladeshi students are normally highly um, you know rigorous as far as academic performance so i have no worry for that so you have to go through internal selection additionally if you're interested let's say in three plus one three years in South Korea, one year in France, for example, you don't have to repeat your study in France for three years. So you can spend three years, um, you know, in South Korea studying at a university, and then plus one year in our partner university in France, three plus one. So at the end of the graduation or at the end of the study, you're eligible for getting two degrees, one from our university and another partner university. So for example, you choose a dual degree program with our partner university in Canada. Does that mean you can stay in Canada after you graduate? Yes. So after you graduate, you don't have an obligation to go home to, uh, let's say, Bangladesh or in, to go back to South Korea. If you meet the minimum requirements of staying uh, after graduation in Canada, you are free to do so. So, and at the end of the day, again, you get two degrees. So that's how our credit transfer um, mechanism works in dual degree. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, great, great. Uh, thank you so much for the answer. Uh, I have another question for transferring credit. Uh, is there any opportunity to transfer credit from Bangladeshi, I mean, one year or two year degree? I mean, uh, those who are students who completed their degree for, for one year, I mean, first year of, of their honors or second year of their honors, uh, can they transfer their credit to Usom University? That's a very good question. So if you're already in a bachelor program in Bangladesh, let's say you were in a first year or second year, and then you decided, okay, uh, I think I need to go to South Korea to open, uh, uh, broaden my horizon. The answer, uh, the question is, can I transfer my credits? The answer is yes. The question is, what is your study background? And are you transferring to the same um, study pathway when you are here? For example, if you're studying management or business, it's easier for you to transfer to the similar program here, management or uh, business. What is challenging is that, for example, you're studying engineering back home and you want to transfer to, let's say, culinary arts here. That's probably a little challenging simply because there is no way that the number of subjects or credits that you took back home in uh, Bangladesh can be applicable in the same major here. So if you have the same study major in Bangladesh and you would like to transfer your credits here, as long as they're both a bachelor program, the answer is yes, you can. Great, great. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, as you have already covered these uh, these answers, like uh, PhD program opportunities and uh, after study. So, is it easy to actually settle there after study or get a job, or is it difficult? It, I have a question like this. So, can you say something about it? That's great. That's a very good question. To you who is asking this question, I'm glad that you asked this. So here's the thing. If you're coming here as an international student, the situation is very different if uh, compared to if you're studying in your home country. You need to be extra in your effort in making sure that after you graduate, you give 100% of effort in looking for jobs. And that's everywhere is the same, not only in South Korea, but everywhere you go as international students, that's the common rule of thumb. Now, the question is in South Korea, is it easy or it's hard? The question goes back to you as a person. How much have you invested 
as far as efforts during the time that you students that you really want to stay in South Korea. The common mistake that I see for a lot of students is that they are not worried about looking for jobs if they haven't graduated yet, which is a very wrong move for any international students. They should start looking for jobs and opportunities and see if they're eligible for a local job market since the time they are studying. So roughly about third year or probably second year and fourth year, they already have to one, try to set uh, a network, try to befriend any professors, see them outside of class and talk with them and see what their insights about looking for jobs and keep in touch with them, that's one. Second, learn the language. I cannot stress this enough. The more you understand Korean, the better it is for you for employment opportunities. Why? Because um, Bangladesh and Korea, economy-wise, they're close. They're looking for people who can actually work um, in South Korean industries, but allow them to open markets in Bangladesh. How do they do that? That means they need to hire people who understand the local culture of Korea, the language and the Bangladeshi culture. So if you are coming here only speaking English and not interested in learning Korean at all, and you're not int interested in establishing network with local people, you only get a degree. You will not get an opportunity or exposure. So that's my, my uh, tips. So whether or not it's easy as hard is entirely up to you. I've seen a lot of Bangladeshi students successful here because they start building the network ever when they're still a student. So they're, they're not busy in partying. They're not busy in just having fun, but they also built that network while they're still a student. Uh, great, great. Thank you so much for the detailed information. This is actually, this information should be very useful for the students. Actually, what I understand from your conversation, from your information, that is, student has to be very, uh, I mean, career oriented from the first day in Korea. And also, he has to be qualified internationally so that he can uh, actually get a job over there. He has to be very good in Korean language. All right. I have a, another question, actually. Um, what are the challenges to live in Korea? Excuse me? I'm sorry? What are the challenges uh, to live in Korea, uh, actually, for the foreign students? I see. So this is a very good question. Um, Korea is the third country I live in. So the challenge that I see is probably dif different with the challenge that you see. So it might be different a little bit. But in general, the challenge that I see here, um, as a student specific, is that they're, they're not fast enough in sinking in and integrating into the environment. So as a person who is international, right? So we come to South Korea and then we start studying. But the nature of human being, when we move to a completely new environment, the first instinct is to create an environment that is close enough that looks like back home. So in, in your uh, case, for example, you come here, you look for uh, friends from Bangladesh, you live uh, with people from Bangladesh, you only eat with them, you only um, eat Bangladeshi food. You don't make efforts in getting to know other people. You don't make efforts in cooking Korean food at home or any other food. You don't make efforts in trying to get yourself into uncomfortable situation where it's going to enrich you uh, personality wise. So the challenge uh, then, after graduation, you realize that this is important and it's too late for you to um, catch up with that. So this is the biggest challenge so far. When, um, when I see my students here, they're still in first year, second year, I keep encouraging them to do so, involving them with different opportunities or meeting with a lot of people. They would say like, no, 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 I'm not comfortable doing that. No, 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 I'm not comfortable doing that. So they would already say no, but, and by the time they finish their study, they're like, I just realized that it was very important for me. I mean, so that's the deal. Uh, the most challenge is we can't leave whatever things that we're comfortable with back home. And because South Korea is a country that is very specific in when it comes to language, when it comes to way of living, if you don't want to open up and be flexible, there is no opportunities for you and it's very difficult for you. So when you come here, you have to uh, keep an open mind and it's not easy to have an open mind. In your mind, 
everything has to be like home. Everything has to be like in Bangladesh. And that's a really hard mindset to change, but it takes time. It's not something that is final. The earlier that you realize it, the better. Great, great. Actually, this is about the adaptability that they need to be uh, very quick in that and they need to explore the opportunities. So actually, I have no other question. I will uh, hear from Mr. Shahid about any other question left from the students. Yes, I have uh, one question. Uh, like, uh, do you have any plan to introduce any uh, other subject for PhD, like marketing or uh, international business? Do you have any plan? That's a good question, Mr. Shahed. <clears throat> so apparently our PhD programs is right now trying to strengthen the accreditation and the quality of the program, especially, you know, COVID changes the face of education a lot. So right now, I think Busong University and Solbridge prefer to um, make the programs rigorous first before a branching out to different PhD programs. Um, but to your consolation, at, uh, our PhD program is fairly short compared to a lot of Western countries. Um, it's roughly about three years, three and a half years. Um, so the students can actually pursue another PhD if they want. <coughs> and um, for now, we're not uh, branching out to other programs first before these ones, the one that we just opened, are um, you know academically strong enough? Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any other. Great, Mr. Oh. Shams. If uh, if you allow, um, if the time allows, do you mind if I play one video? If that's okay. Yeah, that is okay. Uh, I I'll just ask you one more question. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, how a student can be succeeded uh, in his study in South Korea and in next life after study exploring job opportunity and other opportunities so could you guide basically i i have seen some of your videos that you are also a motivator you are also <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you say something about your other activities also that sure, can encourage sure. the students thank you mr shams that's a good question so um, you actually nail the most important aspect of life here is that how do we succeed in life, not just succeed in studying, right? Succeed in studying means you get good grades, you can uh, maintain or get a higher scholarship, you graduate on time. These are the standard metrics for success in education. And everybody knows that. The problem is the, uh, the success in education does not equate in, in success in life. So... I've seen a lot of quite a, a Bangladeshi students on campus. They're kind, they're smart, they're very good at, uh, in class and in studying, but I'm afraid it's not enough. Studying is not enough. And again, usually the common phenomenon that I see on campus is that they come to class, they study, they go home, and then they watch movies or Netflix or hang out uh, with friends from the similar background. The, they don't want to meet people from other nationalities. They're not traveling enough. And then they're not participating in activities that is outside the class enough. So maybe being part of student council or being part of other competitions. We have a lot of competitions going on, debate, coding, and then uh, English competitions. And Bangladesh students are extremely smart. I don't understand why they don't want to uh, participate in this. Usually it's because of, it's in very inconvenient in time and they, they're afraid to lose. So because their standard of education and standard of themselves is so high, they don't want to risk their time if they know they're not going to win. So I think this is something that is, um, you know, important to note that regardless you're going to win or lose, join. It will give you an opportunity, uh, enrich you as a person in a different way. And it's going to be helpful for you to, after you graduate, you understand that it's more than just a piece of paper of diploma. You have to have a leadership ability. And lastly, and most importantly, is that because we don't see a lot of Bangladeshi students enough in student activities, other younger students from Bangladesh, they feel like, oh, if my senior is not doing this, why should I, why should I do this? So you should uh, create an opportunity where 
the younger people coming from Bangladesh see you as a role model. So we need more Bangladeshi students in doing this. That's a little bit from me, Mr. Shams. I hope yeah. that answers the question. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this will actually encourage the students. Uh, would you please proceed for the next? Uh, I mean, you're going to uh, share a video, right? Right, right. So the video is uh, showing a little bit what the Usong campus looks like. Um, so in general, um, so if they have any questions, they can uh, reach out to you or write it in the chat too. So one. Hey, so what I'm showing right now is what the generally the campus looks like. So hopefully this brings a little bit of information on how the life as a student looks like. Hello and a special welcome to all new students joining the Usung family and welcome back to all of our returning students for this fall 2020 semester. So we're standing in front of Usung University's main gate as we start another challenging semester. The past year has been quite unique and with the unprecedented challenges that COVID-19 has presented. So as a result, many of you unfortunately are unable to get the full experience of regular student life at WSU. So we thought that we would take a moment and show everyone around campus. Think of this as a quick connect to campus video. So come along as we introduce you to Usong University. This is the W19 building, also known as the Endicott building. This is where most global management and sea home students have their classes. You'll also find the Student Services Center located here. This is the Media Arts Building W17. Not only will SEMA students take majority of their classes here, but they also come to the on-campus studio and also get most of their equipment from here. This is the W16 building where majority of you will take most of your English classes. Additionally, you will also find an auditorium where there are many events that take place and you will also find the campus bookstore and the post office. This is W12, the Sika building and this is where majority of our students have their culinary classes. And it's also where you'll find Starico, that's the student-run restaurant. As you can see, this is the Global Railroad and Transport Management Area, W4.
This is S2, our new four lab research facility for our technology studies department. Here, you will utilize our lab to learn how to do robotics, fly drones, and create things with 3D printers. Finally, we come to the Usong sports field. Students normally come out to do recreation and to do exercise. There are two main events that take place here. First, we have the student sports day, and secondly, we have the festival. So we look forward to welcoming you back onto the sports field uh, and once everything is settled. So that's a little bit about the university. Um, I'll let go the screen back to Mr. Shams and Mr. Shahid. Thank you. Thank you so much for the uh, excellent campus facilities and resources video. Uh, actually, I would like to uh, uh, request the students who, who have actually participated in this seminar I uh, would like to, uh, they can also visit uh, my YouTube channel, Shams Edu. Uh, there are also other videos for the campus. So they can actually uh, understand how they can see the facilities available there. Before the plan to study in South Korea, it is better to uh, actually explore the opportunities before. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, have a good day. If you have any other questions, please let me know through our uh, Facebook page or SMS or over phone call. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I hope next time we see each other, I'll see you in South Korea. Thank you. Have Thank a you. good day.